Hello, my fellow Ripplers. This is Chris Miles, your cash flow expert and anti-financial advisor. Welcome to our show that's for you and about you. Those that work so hard for your money and you want your money to start working harder for you. And right now, you want that freedom and cash flow prosperity today, not 30 or 40 years from now, but right now to live that life that you love, doing what you love with those that you love. But most importantly, guys, about living a life of meaning and purpose and living a rich life because as you're blessed financially, you can create more blessings and more impact in the life of others. Guys, thank you so much for allowing me to create a ripple effect through you. I appreciate you guys tuning in. You guys have been binging the crap out of these episodes. I love to see that many of you guys are going back through those and keeping up with these today. So thank you so much for doing so. Thank you for sharing. And again, making this show special because you guys are what makes this show special. As a reminder, be sure to go to our YouTube channel. If you haven't done that already, go and subscribe, especially because there's other bonus videos we're going to be releasing here and already have been releasing so that you can actually learn more beyond just what these podcasts are offering. So be sure to go check that out today. Chris Miles was able to retire twice by the time he was 39 years old, but he's not content to just enjoy his own financial freedom and peace of mind. Chris wants you to have your own ripple effect so you can live free today. He's not the financial advisor you expected. He's the anti-financial advisor you deserve. He's jumping behind the mic right now, ready to make waves. Here's Chris Miles. All right, guys, so today I'm I'm on a little bit of a rant, okay? Um, I wanna be very honest with you. I wanna make sure that I'm very direct and that I'm not misunderstood. Uh, Because the truth is, is that 2020 was an interesting year for us, wasn't it? You know, we, uh, we had what felt like three years or four years packed into one, right? I mean, how many different events did we have? And even 2021 hasn't necessarily been that boring either, has it? Um, so really these last two years, I joke with people, it's been like the longest five years ever, you know? Um, and, and I want you to understand one thing is that what happened in 2020 was a fire alarm for you. It should have been a fire alarm for you. I want you to ask yourself, am I doing things differently today as a result of what I've learned from these last few years? Am I doing something differently today from what I've learned over the last few years? And I don't mean going and being all bitter and fighting with your friends and neighbors and everything else. That's not what I'm talking about, right? I'm talking about, have you become richer as a result of it? Have you actually become wiser more important than being richer because that comes first, have become wiser as a result of what's happened these last few years. Because you know, the, the, we're titling this episode, why every entrepreneur, every, every single entrepreneur needs passive income, right? Every one of you, especially if you're an entrepreneur right now, business owner, I don't care if you're a business owner that you've started as a brick and mortar business. I don't care if you're an online entrepreneur or business owner. I don't care if you're a network marketer in direct sales or network marketing or multi-level marketing. This applies to you. Because if you have not learned from the last two years, if you have not taken advantage of all the inflation, all the massive amount of money that's been pumping into our system right now, which I know has been flowing through our hands, if you have not taken advantage of that money to create passive income for you now, I'm going to ask you, what the heck are you doing? What are you doing right now? Now, I get it. If, if you're in the position where you went from below zero and you're just digging your way back out, awesome. Like if you're progressing, great. You know, if you haven't even built up a little bit of a savings account, that's your first step, right? You need to have some emergency reserves before you worry about trying to put your money away to invest. However, um, I'm not seeing that with a lot of people. Um, I, I am seeing that happen with some, right? But a lot of people I've seen that even if they're in that position I just described, where they're like coming back from below zero, trying to battle their way back up to zero or better. The thing I'm seeing though, is some of them are starting to gamble with this money too, because with everything going on, it's like, Hey, I heard that Bitcoin was the way to go or crypto is the way to go. And this, this thing's a penny. It's a penny per, per coin or per token. That's the thing I'm going for. Or hey, these stocks, like these things just keep going up. I'm going to buy more stocks. And so they don't invest for cash flow. They don't create any passive income. They try to gamble and hoping that they can hit a home run to solve all their problems. If this is you, stop right now. Do not fall into that trap because I guarantee you, you will be right back to where you were, possibly worse than previous to 2020. 
You got to be so freaking careful of that because that gambler mentality is what happens right before things tank, right? Everything becomes euphoric. Everything seems like a win. You get lazy. You get, you get a little bit sloppy with how you invest and then you lose it all. Be warned of that. Now for the rest of you, the rest of you that aren't in this situation, maybe you're saying, oh, I've been building up savings and hey, I've been doing some of this stuff. Maybe you have been gambling it. Stop that as well. Do not gamble right now. The biggest thing you should have learned from 2020 from a financial standpoint, right, is you need other streams of income coming in. Because if you're a business owner, you just had this little fire alarm go off that said, hey, you're a non-essential business. Shut down. And even if you became one of the essential businesses that was able to remain open, good for you. Just know that if they can shut down these other businesses, what's to stop them from shutting down yours? And this applies to me just as much as it applies to you. What stops anybody from wanting to shut down money ripples, right? What stops anybody from wanting to shut down that dental practice that you have? What's stopping from this chiropractic practice you have or from that pharmacy you work at or from that tech company you're with? Because even that tech company, they might say, you know what? We feel like we don't like what, what the space that tech is going into right now. Let's shut it down. Or worse, hey, there's been so much money pumping these IPOs and all these tech startups and everything else. It affected us. We went to recession. That's like another Y2K and bam, you now got laid off, right? And that's even if you own a job. But again, specifically, if you're an entrepreneur, do not think that you're safe just because you have more control than the employee because you give yourself that job. Just know it's very possible that you could be the one shut down. And there could be various reasons, right? It could be a health matter. It may not even be the government's fault, right? It might be something from your own health that requires you to have to shut down your business. Are you going to be okay if that happens? The question you have to ask is, if my business stopped today, just right like that, and this includes if you're a network marketer, multi-level, if that company shut down your distributorship or your direct sales company right now, even if it's just your line, not the whole company, but your line, which I have seen happen to some of the top, top direct sellers and network marketers in the business, they have been shut down overnight like that. If you do not have other streams of income, you gambling just as much as somebody just put money in Bitcoin right now. Because if you've been pumping in and making a lot of money, if you're really profitable in this business and it's just going to savings or you want to pump it into the stock market or whatever it is, you got another thing coming. You are so in trouble because I assure you there will be a time, even if the stock market doesn't tank right now, you should be more worried because that means that inflation is so rampant that the stock market probably won't even keep up with it for one. But two, that means that everything else is going crazy and that your stocks are losing in comparison to inflation. That can easily, easily be the case. Even if the market keeps going up and I'm wrong and it doesn't go down, I think there will be a point soon when the market will tank. I know I've been saying that for several years because again, it's just becoming overdue. It's like when people say here in Utah, they say, hey, you know, we're supposed to have an earthquake every so many hundreds of years. We're now 50 years overdue. Does that mean the earthquake's gonna happen tomorrow? No, but it does mean that the longer you go without it, without that release of pressure, the bigger the quake. So that's what's scaring people the most. And again, I've, I've been here in Utah for over 20 years. I've been saying that the entire 20 years. So it just means that it could be bigger and bigger. Same thing in the market. The more it keeps climbing up, the farther and faster it can drop on you and cost you a lot of money. And then what are you going to do? You're going to do everything that everybody does in the stock market. A few people will bail out and then they'll lose tons of money at that point, but they'll wait too long, right? Others will say, well, I don't want to lose money. So they'll say, I'll just ride that wave. And that could take a decade, maybe longer to get your money back before that happens. All in the meantime, you lost that opportunity cost to make more money. Now, granted, guys, I get it. If you're an entrepreneur, your number one investment should be your business. That should be the place you're trying to make it, especially if you're just barely making ends meet in that business, trying to get it going. Perfect. Focus on getting it profitable. Focus on profit in your business first. That is number one key point. Get that profit going in your business and make it lean and mean and just a killing machine, right? Make sure it's just a profitable, like it makes your accountant super excited. And I'm, trust me, I'm sure your accountant doesn't even know how to get excited because they don't have a personality, right? But if you can get your accountant excited, you know, you're doing something right. That's what I'm telling you to do. Get it dang profitable, right? Get it lean and mean. So if things do happen, 
you can be okay. I, I just had a client, by the way, recently who got in a head on car accident. He's got to shut down his practice for a little while. He's like, Chris, what do I do? I'm like, well, there's different things you do with the insurance. If you had this, you know, overhead expense insurance, that might be a little help in the meantime. You know, if you've got disability, that will help you. It may not help the practice, but it'll help you in the meantime, right? If you've got PIP, use your personal injury protection on your auto insurance, use that, help you, right? I've given them all that advice, but ultimately when it comes down to it, he's got to have some cash reserves to get this thing going. He's got to make sure he's not making this business so fat, so expensive with, with those expenses that if he shows a, you know, if he can't produce, his practice is in trouble. You don't want to be in that place. So make it profitable first. Second, what do you do with that profit? Don't keep putting it back in your business. Otherwise, you don't have profit. If you put money in your back in your business, which means you're spending it back in your business, it's not profitable. I'm okay if you put money back in the business to generate more sales and marketing if it's actually giving you more than what you're investing. But there's a certain point where those dollars you might put into marketing or things to help increase your sales, you know, increase your bottom line. At some point, there's this tipping point where it doesn't become productive anymore. You can't just keep pumping money in where it doesn't produce a return. What do you do with that extra money? And even if you could keep pumping it in, the question you still have to ask yourself is, do I have multiple streams of income to protect me? I need that insurance policy of passive income. That is one of the best protections you can create. Take that extra money and use that to invest. And we talked about a lot of these things in recent weeks So that what are those kind of investments you do other than the stock market, right? Again, that's the key is how do we get that money out? But again, I, I think the biggest problem is not about whether you can do the strategy. Of course, you need to understand the strategies. That's why you can reach out to our team. You can go to our website, moneyripples.com, reach out to us on the contact us page, right? That's easy. That's the easy part. You know, finding the strategy is the easy part once you do that. The hard part is getting your mind around breaking those patterns of always either one, putting money back in your business or two, um, you're just blowing it, right? Um, and again, I, 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 I'm picking on network marketers a little bit because if you're a network marketing direct sales, I probably should do a separate in podcast episode just for you because this industry is the most guilty of not reinvesting the profits of anybody I've ever met, of any group of individuals I've ever met. They should be the most concerned. But again, when you're taught that, oh, I've got residual income coming in, I'm going to be fine. Don't trust it. It means you haven't been in network marketing long enough to see what really happens in that industry. I'm not saying the industry is bad. I'm not saying that you're going to lose, right? That's not the case. In fact, and anybody who's trying to rip on network marketing should repent, right? Because there are network marketers that make a killing and probably make more money than you. And they probably do it with less effort. You know, it doesn't mean they didn't put a lot of work in but it means they probably got it going well, okay? But that being said, the number one of the number one industries I see is the guilty of, of this whole situation of not reinvesting their money by having that money just dry up, just go away, disappear into whatever in, in hopes of building their business, right? But then when things stop, when the income stops, whether because of the company stops or because they stop your specific business because you are an independent contractor, you do not own a business, all of a sudden income's gone. I don't want you guys to be in that place, right? No matter what industry, what business you're in, you need, need multiple streams of passive income coming in to protect you. So you know that when you work in your business, you do it because you want to, not because you have to. And the beautiful part is, is that if you are in that position in your business, you come from a place of power. You come from a place where you know you don't need that customer. You don't need that new client or that patient that coming in. You know you're fine regardless. And that's where the power comes from. Because when you're in that place of confidence, more people are actually attracted to you. Your business actually grows. You have more profit and more to invest to create more passive income. Okay? That is the key. You know, I'll give you a story about uh, one of my clients. And I've shared this many times, but it's so important because the mindset that happens here, it not only liberates you from a, a number standpoint, but it liberates you from an emotional standpoint too. You know, I had a client who was a chiropractor, you know, made decent money in his practice. He even saved a half million to his IRAs. And that was a half million even after the recession cut it down big time, right? So he lost quite a bit of money in his, in his IRA. Now he had been saving up, but he was 62 years old. Three years in a row, his practice started declining. He started burning out. He started losing that passion for his work because now he was starting to become more paycheck to paycheck. The financial concerns were worrying him, the wor worries of the world, the recession, which I guarantee you guys are going to be moving into again. We're going to have another recession coming up. 
all that stuff piled on him. And so he was getting to the point of just saying, am I going to be doing this the rest of my life? Am I going to be trapped in my business forever? Even though he loves serving his patients, he felt trapped. Have you been in this place before? Have you felt like, man, can I ever escape this business? Did I create a job for myself? And for some of you, this is the biggest overtime job you've ever had. And it might even be, it might be great paying, or it might be one of the worst paying jobs you've ever had, depending on what, what stage you're at in your business, right? But this is where he was. He was burning out. Here's the great thing, guys. Just by increasing his cash flow, we were able to refinance and do some things to free up cash, freed up 4,200 bucks a month for him. That was big, right? Then <laughs> what happened, you know, is on top of that, we actually, we save him some money on taxes too. Don't want to forget that. Save him some money on taxes. Uh, and by the end of the day here, um, when he did that, you know, that extra five, 6,000 a month average, if you factor in the tax savings, everything that just got him to relax and breathe easier. When he did that, when patients would show up to his office, he wasn't as stressed anymore. He was actually a lot lighter, right? He was, he was just felt better. What happened? The guy ended up making within just a few months, an extra two to $3,000 a month because more patients started converting. They started working with him in his practice. Same number of people. It wasn't like he was doing better marketing. It was simply just the change in himself because he relaxed, because he knew that the financial stresses weren't there anymore. By the way, he still had several hundred thousand he could invest to create more passive income on top of that. Guys, that's the magic behind the cash flow. This is why you need passive income because when you don't have that coming in, when you know it, you just know in the back of your mind, even if you try to push it back there, it's still there. That seed is still spreading like a virus, like a cancer in your brain telling you, oh, if anything happens in my business, I'm screwed for lack of a better word, right? That's it. It's, it's over. You need passive income. Guys, like I said, you know, if, if you're in a situation, you got at least a few hundred thousand dollars, you're like, where do I invest it? Reach out to us on moneyripples.com. If you don't, but you're still figuring, trying to figure out how to make that work, you know, the, of course, there's that, that online group coaching course you can even do for as little as 97 bucks a month, right? But regardless, guys, I want you to wrap your mindset around not just the strategy of doing it, like not just going and trying to do it yourself, but instead thinking about, am I serious? Am I really truly committed to generating passive streams of income right now to liberate myself, to be sure that I'm working on my business because I want to, not because I have to. Otherwise, if you're just listening to the show, you're like, yeah, that's what I want, but you're not doing it. You're a liar. You're flat out lying until you move from yay to do. I'm in. This is it. I'm committed. I'm going to make sure this happens. That is the point that you know that you're being honest with yourself and that you're ready. And that's when things change. Remember, 2020 was just a warning. It was a big warning. If you haven't woken up yet, now, right now is the time to listen. So guys, please take this to heart from the bottom of my heart. Please do not get caught in this trap where you get stuck, that you get, you get in big, big trouble because you weren't prepared. Guys, you need passive income. Go and make it a wonderful and prosperous week and a week of cash flow and commitment right now. We'll talk to you later. Hey! Visit us online at moneyripples.com for more resources to help you fix money leaks and get your money working harder for you now.